Good morning, Bottom Nation. These are the first words I've said to anybody today. Thank you for listening. Um, some real talk. I know a lot of you know, and you know, it's on a delay for me, um, but uh, that I've been going through some stuff. And last night I had the opportunity to talk about it with uh, some patrons and it really, um, it made me feel a lot better and it made me feel a lot more, um, made me feel like I could share some of, st- of the stuff that's been going on rather than, um, well, everything, because it's there's so much. There's so much happening that I haven't been able to talk to you about. Um, and if you're listening, like, I'm so glad that you're here. Um, you guys are the best. You're the best. Oh, God. it's gonna. I should have saved this for the gay thought. Alex, move this to the gay thought. Happy Monday, Bottom Nation. Today on the podcast, we have Kira Graves, fan favorite. I got her name right. We get into hemorrhoids. We talk about the moment where your partner sees your butthole or you need your partner to see your butthole because you have an emergency. Don't we all love that moment in <laughs> in a relationship where you're like, man, I really got to expose myself and not in the way that I thought. Um, great episode. Kira is fantastic. I know a lot of you have been asking about Bree. Bree's coming back. Don't worry. Uh, she's just been working on her film and you should go support her and her film. Okay. It's coming out soon. So go do that. And, uh, ashleygavin.com for all my tour dates. I've got Denver coming up, Albany coming up, Northampton, Houston. Um, and I'll leave it there at the DC Philly. Um, there you go. Thanks for being here, guys. Patreon.com slash WHGS. We couldn't do this without you. Consider donating a dollar. If we made you laugh today, give us a dollar. Give me a dollar, bitch. All right. Have a great week. Listener, this episode is brought to you by Smalls. Listener, you know I love my cat. And if you've really been listening, you know my cat Fletcher struggles with his food. He has food sensitivity. All until I discovered Smalls. Oh my God, I love Smalls cat food, okay? It's made with preservative-free ingredients that you'd find in your fridge. It's delivered right to your door, and my cat is coughing and puking hardly at all, almost never, okay? You gotta get this stuff. It's so fresh. I would eat it if I weren't a vegetarian. (laughs) Give your cat the gift of great cat food this holiday season. Head to smalls.com slash gay and use promo code gay at checkout for 50% off your first order, plus free shipping. That's the best offer you'll find, but you have to use my code GAY for 50% off your first order. One last time, that's promo code GAY for 50% off your first order, plus free shipping. Go, 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 listeners. Get some smalls for your kitty. This is the first time I'm bringing this up online because it's very vulnerable. Wow, clickbait, clickbait. But what do you guys think about hemorrhoids? When I got my first hemorrhoid, I was in high school, and I was with a dude. So I wasn't going to show him my hemorrhoid. But now, like, I've definitely been like, all right, like, how do how does my butthole look? And I just, like, bend over and spread the cheeks <laughs> with my partner now. It's a great dynamic. Yeah, people are like, oh, it's so intense to, like, look into someone's eyes. And it's like, look into someone's asshole. <laughs> I was going to do a bit about not knowing your name again. I was thinking about saying <laughs> we have an incredible guest. We have Cora Greer on the podcast today. <laughs> oh, we, God. We have, we, we, we have uh, Kira Knightley here. Um, huge, <laughs> oh. huge get. Um, no, but Maddie's... Uh, so Brie was supposed to be on this episode, and then Brie had some shit come up, and then Maddie had some shit come up. So this episode almost didn't happen. So thank you for like moving all your stuff around for us. I had no stuff to move around, so no worries. Perfect. Good to, <laughs> good to catch you on the up and up and, and, and get in ahead of the massive wave of success that's surely coming your way. I also had nothing going on, so <laughs> we're all in the same boat. But Maddie, I... Yeah, I say, sorry, oh, I was say, I'm in North Carolina and it's 90 degrees and my face is red as a tomato right now. Wait, let me see if I can get another light on this. I'm... Okay, wait, actually, he, that looks better. That yeah, you actually... Out. That looks better. Um, Maddie, I was going to say... Are you cursed because your rabbit, okay, Maddie has a pet rabbit. Mm-hmm. I have two. two. Two pet rabbits. One of them has, on, has been on death's door several, <laughs> several times. He had syphilis. 
He had MRSA, and then he had to get a section of his liver removed. Why? I was there for that one, the liver. Wow. <laughs> um, and... <laughs> No, and, and even now, when we're on the road, like if I'm opening for you, it's always like, hey, sorry, I'm like falling out of the hotel room with my <laughs> shoes half on. Like I'm it's like I don't think I'm actually good at comedy at all. I think just things keep happening to me. Yeah, that are your, funny. Your, life, <laughs> your life is a is a comedy. Yeah, yeah, you're you're like a lemony snicket character. Like you're just you're just like you're out there slipping on banana peels and falling into manholes and shit. Um <laughs> Well, Kira's a pro, uh, one of our, I think, better episodes that we've done. Great story last time you were here. And you're like, you know, in addition to being an actor, you're like a content creator. You do all kinds of, I really appreciated your your tummy content that you made recently. Thank you so much. Yeah. I, first of all, first of all, thank you for having me on. And second of all, thank you for knowing who I am this time. Yeah, I, I um. did do the bare, I did actually do the bare minimum that is required of this job. There you go. There you go. Uh, couldn't say the same for you last year, but at least you're doing your research this year. So I will have to change your rating now because it was a six and a half before. It's rate my professor, but it's rate my podcast host. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, I was going to say, like, what is your rating? Is this just for people you know? No, like, remember last time I was on here, you were like, Oh, right. You didn't know how to say my name. You didn't know who the fuck I was. And you were like, I'm just having you on here for like the clickbait, low key. Like, <laughs> I did not I was say like, that. <laughs> you said, Oh, like, every time I have queer YouTubers on, I get lots of views. <laughs> Listen. It's the truth, but the real reason I had you on is because you were frequently requested, and I'm not going to okay. tell my listeners that they're wrong, right? <laughs> so, look, this is... Uh, I'm tired of people. I'm tired of everybody. <laughs> yeah, Period. there's clickbait. Some people get more views. I don't give a shit if you think that sounds antithetical to what I'm doing. That's my fucking <laughs> job, bitch. Everybody's doing it. No one wants to. I'm not yelling at you. I'm yelling at the listener. Bottom. No, everyone she's is. Not, she's has yelling it. at her mom. It's not I'm even. It's, it's not <laughs> right. even. Yeah, you're right. Maddie, it's childhood you. trauma. It's childhood trauma. I'm trauma dumping. You guys love yeah. that. I love and then I'll and I'll and then I'll uh, love bomb you after this listener. But I <laughs> I the thing is that no one else is going to be honest about the content that they're making besides me because I have nothing to lose and no fucks to give. OK, that's where we're at. Hi, Kira. Thank you for being here. <laughs> <laughs> I love the honesty. <laughs> At least we're honest out here. We are honest. We are honest. But the tummy content, I thought it was really good. Wait, I'm Thank so sorry. You. I'm out of the loop. Can you fill me in on the tummy content? It's just me on the internet showing my tummy and like, it's such a radical act, but like- It really actually is. Right? Like it, it took me a long time to get to the point where I could actually show my authentic body online. Um, and now that I am, it's like, it's crazy. Like the, the split responses. It's like, Half of the people, because there's this one Instagram reel that I posted and it has like 11 million views. Randomly. Are you serious? Yeah. And it's just like me on the beach being like me, like it was me sitting like with my knees up to my chest, kind of like this. And I'm like, this is how I sat as a teenager at the beach. And then I switched to like sitting how I sit now. And it was like just comfortable, open, showing my body. Don't give a fuck. And like half of the people were like, oh my God, like you need to go on an exercise plan. You need to go on a diet. Like you, you don't look really? healthy. And then there's another half of people that are like, why are people saying that this body looks unhealthy? Like people are just like arguing in the comments. And it, it was very interesting, but well, also weird because it's that's my what own makes body. something go viral. The, ar exactly. the arguing. I'm in almost the exact same situation where people were arguing over my body and it made a stand up clip go viral on Instagram because it was like people debating your, it wasn't people debating your weight. It was people debating like if I tried hard enough to lose weight, but it's like really interesting. Do you read comments? Cause like I saw like five and I was like, I can't with this. You can't. I mean, you can't. If you want to stay mentally stable, you can't look at comments. And if you'd like to absolutely lose it every time <laughs> you make content, my advice to you is you read every single comment 
every single DM and don't delete any of them, even though that's what people are saying that you're doing. Don't just really let them burn into your retinas if you yes. want to be as successful as I am. <laughs> Really internalize be, everything. And if you want to be as successful as I am, which is uh, significantly less, <laughs> you can just kind of shut your eyes to... <laughs> no, Matt, you're me. on your way. That that clip might hit 20 million, dude. That clip is going That's bananas. Crazy. It hit like 15. It's so weird. But I really feel you on the like uh, people debating your body in the comments is so bizarre. Because I'm like, you don't know me. You don't know if I have a medical condition. Like, you have no idea. No. And people were like, well, why don't you just like, if you're so unhappy with your body, like, why don't you just change it? And it's like, I, that's not even what I was saying. I was saying I am happy with my body. Like, right. People right. are just, they're I don't projecting. even know. Uh, people are constantly projecting. They're, yeah. they're, they're, I mean, like, I'd say probably one or two of every 10 comments is a actual, is a, a pure projection of whatever yeah. they're feeling. And that's why you can't take anything personally. You just have to like. Be like, okay, that's what you're dealing with. That's yeah. not my problem. Yeah. Was it mostly men in the comments who were being negative and then women defending you? Yep. Yeah. Interesting. You got it. Same here. It's so crazy that those men have never seen, like, and I'm, Kira, I know you're non-binary, but I'm just going to use the term, like, female just for yeah. shits and giggles here to keep it simple, but- they don't, these men don't fuck women. So they've never seen what a naked woman's body look like. They don't, these guys have no idea what a body should look like because they're just looking at all these edited, very posed photos on Instagram and they don't, they don't know how to, they don't know what a woman looks like. Yeah. And you know, what is interesting also is I saw a lot of comments that said, why has porn made me think that this isn't a healthy body. Oh, wow. Mm. So a lot of people were like bringing in porn too. Really? I don't watch a lot of porn because um, I'm, I'm a little, I'm a little bitch. Um, and I, it just doesn't do it for me really. But what I thought was interesting about, I'm sorry, we've really focused. You've been here two seconds and I've been like, let's just fully dive into the Let's do it. the the nook of your belly button. Let's just dive into your belly button. <laughs> well, because I I have um maybe a similar body type as you. Like I carry more of my weight in my belly than my I have I have no ass. I don't know what your ass looks like. I'm not it's asking big, you to it's it's a big bedonk. Oh, okay. Never mind. <laughs> then we do not sorry, this is from a waist up this is a waist up interview listener. Yeah. If you're listening, I can't I don't actually have every guest show me their ass before we record. <laughs> um, Imagine that's like a requisite. You're like, all right, first of all, we need to see the ass. Well, the rectum, and then we can deserve, the, determine. The, the, the rectum I mean, that was requisite. how I got hired, but I don't know. <laughs> now I feel kind of special. <laughs> Maddie, why do you think I have you sit on my face in the special sit on my face chair? Oh, um, yeah, she has Kira, a chair with her face on it. So every episode me, I'm sitting on her face. Let's just bring that over for the people who only watch and we have the YouTubers on with Brie. Hold on. We have a chair with my face on it. And I sit on that. Um, but Love it. <laughs> people think that I have a big ego. Um, so weird. No, dude, that's where I want my ashes spread, right on that chair. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I was going to say, I am very sensitive about the size of my stomach. Only recently have I begun to let go of that insecurity. And maybe cause it's because I'm older and I just don't give a shit anymore. Mm -hmm. But like right now is not a great time to be an assless tummy woman. Like it, there, during the Renaissance, during the Renaissance, a woman could rock a little tummy and be painted in a shell. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a shell? <laughs> you know what I mean? She'd be naked, lying next to a tree, mm -hmm. looking like she just had Thanksgiving dinner, and people mm -hmm. were like, that's hot. That's, mm -hmm. But it's not that way anymore. And well, fuck everyone. <laughs> yeah, fuck everybody. <laughs> that's what I have to say to that. I'm just imagining Ashley like you in a Renaissance painting because they're all like very like calm and like eating yeah. grapes out of the sky. I'm imagining Ashley in the middle of a Renaissance painting like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> Still life, grapes, oranges, like a dove it's at the window and you're like, what's going on? 
there's like there's like a group of other people who are just like terrified. Like uh, I'm screaming at them. <laughs> um, well, we're in the apartment. Not really. We're having gay sex with Kira uh, Graves today. I know her name or their name. A very, very highly, highly requested guest. Thank you for being here. Man, thanks for having me. <laughs> and uh, I'm I'm Ashley Gavin, cis gay white woman. She her pronouns. Oh, are you in are you in L.A., Kira? No. Oh, you're in I'm Canada. in Toronto. Yeah. 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 I don't know why I think you're so L.A. I will. I will be moving there like in the next year and a half. I just oh, have to okay. get like, my legal stuff going on. Um, yeah. So I can actually like legally work there. Well, then never mind what I was about to just say. Um, tour dates. I don't know when this is going to come out, uh, but Albany. Richmond, Virginia Beach, Denver, all kinds of places. AshleyGavin.com, Patreon.com slash WHS for um, bonus episode. Can you, can you, I just, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't, I'm, I don't care. I don't, I mean, I do. Obviously, I care very much. I'm glad that you're here, but also, oh my God, I hate the promotion. I hate it. Just give me a check, Netflix, please. Just somebody <laughs> give me a check. And then, as always, the hall monitor to keep me from getting canceled, not doing their job. It's Maddie Wiener. Hello, I'm Maddie Wiener. Uh, I'm a comedian. I use she, they pronouns. I'm queer. Uh, I'm also going to be on the road a little bit. You can find me on Instagram at Maddie T. Wiener. Um, you can find my stand up there. You can find my tour dates. It's a good time. And then Kira, do you mind telling the people who you are and what you're working on and all of that? Yep, yep. Hey, what's up? My name's Kira Graves. And, you don't have uh, to do it. You don't have to do it if you don't want to. You can actually walk off set right now. I'm done, actually. That was disgusting. <laughs> that was the worst thing I ever had to do. Okay, no. Um, my pronouns are they, she, so you can use either. Uh, I'm a content creator and an actor. I have a podcast as well. I don't know if you knew that, but it's all Fuck. about... shit. Yeah, that's Fuck. the one thing you didn't know. Shit. Um you fucked up again <laughs> anyways i do have a podcast it's called safe space with kira grace oh i did know and that i actually did know yeah that. yeah and it's all about like my healing journey healing my mental health and my spiritual awakening and i have people on to talk about like their healing journey so it's very like mental health based um spirituality based so if you really like that check it out um and then you can follow me on tiktok Kira.Graves, Instagram, Kira Graves. Listener, are you listening to our Patreon exclusive, You're Having Gay Sex? Well, here's a sneak peek of what you missed last week. I like hanging out with her. I like her as a person, but I like I'm having trouble getting around the nicotine. It's so funny. It's I have the opposite headache. thing because like sick. my grandma smoked, and so it reminds me of my childhood. And then like my first boyfriend you smoked like a pack to bad a day. <laughs> I hate that you're like a man that I have to sit down and talk to like an abused wife. You're an actual man. You want to peg people. And I'm like, Sally, you got to go stay with your sister. <laughs> Wait, I wrote maybe my most offensive joke of all time. I would love to. See it. <laughs> there are four bonus episodes a month of this series. You're having gay sex on our Patreon at the $10 tier and then two at the $5 tier. Patreon.com slash WHGS. Um, I'll jump into my gay sex from the week. I, as Maddie, as you know, and Kira, I'll just fill you in. I have a girlfriend. <laughs> I have a girlfriend, okay? And she is awesome. And we are in an open relationship. It's not poly. It's just open for hookups. Okay. Slay. Love that for you. Thank you. And she recently moved to LA for a few, like two, two or three months for some acting stuff that she's doing. And, um, you know, obviously with the strike and everything, it's a little different than it looked before, but she's out there. So I, I have not been hooking. I was like trying to do the math on like how many hookups I had had and who I was hooking up with and stuff like that. And I think... I was hooking up with this one girl that I met in Seattle and I hooked up with her twice in May and June. And I hooked up with a woman that I met on the road in Austin in April. 
but I don't think I hooked up with anyone in March. Oh, no, I had the threesome in Tampa. Okay, so then in February... Okay, and you grabbed my boob on the podcast. Let's not forget that. <laughs> I, oh, Maddie! <laughs> Am I the last boob you touched? I. That is the last boob that I touched. That's so upsetting. <laughs> That's awesome. I think that rocks. That's <laughs> really deep. Well, actually, Maddie, how many boobs have you touched besides mine? Like a proper squeeze? Probably none. That's what I was going to say. You're my Maddie, first and last. You, your first second base was me. I was your first second base. See, that's... see. Because if I'm your last boob, you can undo that. But if you're my first, it's like, that's a fact about me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good Lord. So, Kira, <laughs> Maddie is genderqueer, exploring their sexuality, bisexual, you know, pansexual, whatever, but is a gay virgin. Okay. So, a virgin with females? Yeah, I've only ever been with, like, cis straight men. Okay. How was that? <laughs> <laughs> I do. I love that's still very much uh, under the umbrella of I like that. That's the worst part. They I love do, it. I know. I'm sorry. I really like men, but that's I also okay. am really into women and androgynous <laughs> people and queer people. But. I love that Kira's doing the No like, judgment. Kira's doing what men do to gay people. Kira's being like, not that there's anything wrong with that. You nope. can. I just don't want to see it. I just. <laughs> yep. <laughs> just don't, don't put it in my face. Don't put a dick near me. Don't don't even talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> but like we touched each other's boobs on the last episode of the podcast. I don't even remember why we did that. Because you why thought did... my boobs are bigger than yours and I was like, "No, they're the same size." They I think they are whatever. Okay, the point is <laughs> The point is I actually haven't been having that much action outside of my relationship and now or I, I have but it's been very light and I've been super busy and frankly kind of sad so like I haven't like really had a thirst for a lot outside of my relationship and my girlfriend and I went on a really long trip you know that's valid like I feel like also like how your mental health is doing really affects like how your libido is doing I don't know if oh my you guys God, yeah. totally. can relate to that like especially for the th past three years I've been oh. You know, it's been pandemic times yeah. and de depression times. So, like, I haven't even had any sort of libido. Really? really? You know, what's interesting is, like, I, I'm on Prozac, and every time I've started or gone up on Prozac, you know, they always say, like, one of the side effects is, like, a decreased sex drive. But mm -hmm. I found that because it so greatly helps my depression and anxiety, my sex drive actually goes up because all of the... I don't have sexual urges being blocked by depression or anxiety. And the okay. net outcome is actually that I have like yes. better sex and I'm more into sex when I'm medicated. It's really interesting. That's great. I, Good for you. It makes so much sense to me. D Jen says the same thing. My, my girlfriend. That's how much depression impacts it. The, the side effect doesn't even matter because it's like a wow. way bigger. Yeah. 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 I'm sorry to hear that you've been so down. I didn't realize that. The last conversation we had, you sounded like an absolute horn dog and that you were fucking... <laughs> Here, there, everywhere, in a box, on a fox. Yes. No, you know <laughs> yes, what? I like, aim, Sam, I aim. <laughs> you know what? I, it's like, it's up and down. It's like, that was like probably a period where I was like really horny. And, you know, it, it always fluctuates. So it's, it's, it is what it is. Like, I'm not trying to like control it. I, I used to get really like upset at myself because I'd be like, what is wrong with me? Like, oh. is there something wrong with me? I feel like people need to talk about that more as like, just, you know, not having a libido because of mental health. Yeah. Like, and how valid that is. And it's like. Super valid. And like, I mean, as, as long as like you and your partner are both satisfied with like whatever sex that you're having, like that's all that matters. I feel like there's so much pressure to be like, why aren't you having more sex? Right. Oh, is there something wrong with your relationship? But it's like, yo, relax. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The stress that you're putting on the sex is making it worse. Yes. Yeah. Uh, 100%. The stress of thinking when was the last time we had sex. And I do think it's good if that stress motivates you to have conversations to check in with each other. Yeah. But beyond that, driving yourself crazy, judging yourself, creating unspoken tension, that's that you don't want any of that. Yeah. That's cool. um, like if it's not distressing to you or your partner, if you're both happy with the amount of sex you're having, but you're like, we quote unquote should be having more, then it's like, for what? And that's one of the ways I think being queer can be quite liberal. Oh God, I'm going to vomit. Being queer can be quite liberating because it's like, 
with with heterosexual sex, there's like a script about coming and like who comes and how they come and, and yada, yada, yada. But with queer sex, you know, we know a lot more about like taking turns in foreplay. And so you can create, excuse me, you can like create a sex life that works for you during this time of low libido where it's like, maybe you're cool to go down on your girlfriend. You know, I'm using these different terms, but let's just take it hypothetically. Like Mm -hmm. maybe you don't come, maybe they don't do anything to you or they do stuff to you and you don't come. Like, you know what I mean? Like we, we have a lot more flexibility and liberation, you know? Yeah. So I think it can be easier to have those conversations when you're queer. Yeah. Yeah. And also I just find that like women are just like better in general, more understanding with that <laughs> stuff and not like, Oh, I need sex from you right now. Yeah. Maybe some people are like that, but it's also like, there's a lot of different ways to be intimate. And I feel yes. like we need to talk about that too, is like, you know, intimacy could look a lot like a lot of different things. It doesn't necessarily mean sex. It could mean a deep conversation. You know, yeah. Pillow mean- talk. I love pillow talk at the end of the day with Jen. That's like one of my favorite things on the planet. Mm hmm. Yeah. Matt or Maddie. Shut up. Shut up. It's so cute. That is really one of the best things in the world, though. Like, what's being that? In bed and, like looking into someone's eyes and just like talking. So- it's so fun. It's so fun. It is. I do it usually like over dinner with like, yes, a, a joint making dates and taking time to actually just look at each other and talk and not have your phones. Well, mm-hmm. anyway. Uh, let me get into my gay sex. I'm, maybe I have to shorten this a little. No, I'm just going to. Okay. So long story short, I I go to the basketball game a lot uh, here in the city, the women's um, WNBA games. And Jen has just moved. All of my friends are comedians. And I end up with three tickets, me, two extra tickets to the game. And I have an hour to fill the seats. And I'm like, I'm never going to be able to fill the seats on a Friday with my comedian friends. Like no one's going to want to come to this game. So I start texting all my non-comedian friends, including my ex-girlfriend from like 15 years ago. And I'm like, this is a long shot, but do you want to come to the game with me tonight? And she's the first person to get back to me. So I'm like, fuck it. I'm going to the game with my ex-girlfriend. And your friends. We're friends. Yeah. No, we okay. are. We see, we see each other like a couple times a year. Okay. So we're like, you know, like old friends that see each other now and then. Mm-hmm. And it's funny because sometimes I really don't remember that we ever dated. I, I Is that rude? <laughs> no. <laughs> That's kind of, that probably means that you actually genuinely are friends now. Yeah. It's yeah. funny to think that we ever dated and like got into fights and like, you know, mm-hmm. like it's, it's so long ago. Um, so then I was like, Oh, this is so funny. Maybe I should text some of my other exes that I've been on good terms with and Hilarious. see if they want to come to the game and I'll go to the game with my exes. What could possibly be more lesbian than that? Going to the WNBA game with my exes. That's, That's hilarious. So, so beautiful. So I picked this ex that I was like, oh, she's going to think this is so funny. She's like a, she's a Broadway musical theater actor, you know, like she's so funny. She's, she has a boyfriend right now. So like, she's not going to care. Here's what I wrote. In your diary. Did you write in your diary after this? No, this is an actual text. <laughs> okay. Hey. So this is random, but I've got an extra ticket to the WNBA game tonight. Obviously, my friends are comics, so they can't come. And everyone I know is out of town. This is over Labor Day. So I invited my ex-girlfriend, and she can make it. So now I'm just inviting other exes. Do you want to go to a basketball game? It's very fun. I did not hear back. (laughs) That's hilarious. Will... I thought we ended on good terms. I thought we were buds. Oh my god! Did I fuck up? Did is there anything in there that like is a fan? Oh, Kira's like you absolutely fucked up. What did I? What did I fuck up? It is insane. (laughs) I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it, but like. Good for you for doing that. Well, because I'm also like, then she's going to be like, do I want to meet all of your other (laughs) ex-girlfriends? Yeah. I just got really excited. You guys think I'm so unhinged. (laughs) It's so funny, but in a way of like, damn, good luck with that, bro. That's so funny. But like, that's why, because I'm a comedian. So I thought this is fucking hilarious. Like it's for the, it's for the bit. 
you know? It's and for I, the podcast. That's exactly, exactly, <laughs> exactly thinking, it, Kira. You're thinking in your head, you're like, this is going to be so good for an episode. Yeah, that, ex- <laughs> literally exactly what I was thinking. And I don't do a lot like that. You know, I'll suck a toe for that, but I'm not going to like, <laughs> I'm not usually, I'm not usually like doing things for that. But this was just like, I, I was frantic. I was trying to fill the seat. It's a great seat. Free basketball game. We're the best team in the league, baby. So then, so then when I realized how unhinged this sound, I sent, I sent a voice memo so I could control, I could do my tone. And mm-hmm. I just was like, also, hello, how are you? Right. Hey, you know, like, I hope you're doing well. I just thought this would be funny. Ha ha ha. Tee hee hee. She listened to the voice memo. She has not gotten back to me. Mm-hmm. When was the last time you guys talked before that? Okay. So that probably should have been a consideration. The last text is like, fuck you. I never want to hear from you the again. Last- yeah. Hey, me and all my ex-girlfriends five years later. <laughs> so the last text was from her. I'd like to say she initiated she sent a screenshot of like a fan account called Evil Ashley Gavin, where I was telling people to go on to Elon Musk's new Twitter and make fake accounts of me that said horrible things. <laughs> <laughs> and this is at real Ashley Gavin. And she goes, help, what is this? And she screenshotted it and sent it to me. And I replied, oh, I told everyone on my podcast that now you can buy a blue check mark on Twitter to make evil versions of me and get canceled. And then then she wrote, well, of course, this honestly makes the most sense out of anything that I could have come up with. So it was like a little bit of a friendly exchange. Right. Okay. Yeah. So you're like, we're like, we're cool. Maybe she was just busy or got sidetracked and you're overthinking it. Should I text her again? No. No, right? No, just just leave it. (laughs) Would it be a faux pas in your open relationship rules to hook up with an ex? Mm. Good question. That is a good question. I actually don't know the answer to that question. I think it depends on the ex. I don't think Jen would, I personally don't think right now Jen would care about this ex. Wait, where did that question come? I wasn't planning on hooking up with her. She's got a boyfriend. No, what? Oh, right, right, right. I forgot. Okay. No, this was totally platonic. I get that. But I was, I, cause I was, when you were like, should I text her again? I was like, well, what's the point? And then I was like, oh, but I forgot she had a boyfriend. No, no. I, it, this was not meant to be. Like any of that. It was purely for the bit and enjoying some basketball. This was friendly Wait. sports. So who ended up going? Just you and the one ex-girlfriend or did you so, rally some people together? It ended, up, <laughs> it ended up being me, my ex-girlfriend, and then one of the queers that works the door at my New York City show, my weekly New York City stand-up show. That is so Aww. funny. That's like if Judd Apatow was gay, that's how his movies would start. That's so <laughs> funny. Yeah, it was like a really weird little group. Um, we had the best time. We had a really that's great time. That's great. And you we know won. What? Go Lib. Slay. Yeah. Um, well, that's my gay sex from this week. Maddie, I have a really fun update for the next episode that we do. But I can't. Really? I'm glad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I really do. I'm excited. Sorry, Kira. Oh, you sick. got the you got the shitty basketball game story. <laughs> That's, uh, it's funny. I love it. <laughs> Listener, this episode is brought to you by Smalls. Listener, if you know me, you know I love my cats, and I have had such a struggle with cat food for one of my cats who has a little bit of a sensitive tummy. You know, I could never find food, frankly, that didn't make him puke or have an allergic reaction. Our next partner has truly made a positive impact on the most important people besides Jen in my life. My cats! My kitty with the food sensitivities and the allergies, my kitty Fletcher, absolutely loves Smalls. And that's why you gotta try Smalls. Are you still feeding your cat kibble? Now is the time to update your cat food with Smalls. Smalls cat food is protein-packed recipes made with preservative-free ingredients you'd find in your fridge. And it's delivered right to your door. Smalls was started back in 2017 by a couple of guys home cooking cat food in small batches for their friends. And a few short years later, they've served millions of meals to cats around the world. I love Smalls. My kitty is so much happier eating Smalls. He's puking less. He's better energy. It's really, really great. And also it's fresh. It doesn't stink. You know, you just know that it's good. 
Give your cat the gift of great cat food this holiday season. Head to smalls.com slash gay and use promo code gay at checkout for 50% off your first order plus free shipping. That's the best offer you'll find, but you have to use my code gay for 50% off your first order. One last time, that's promo code gay for 50% off your first order plus free shipping. Kira, did you have gay sex this week? Um, yeah, I did, actually. Hell yeah. Hell yeah! Pew, 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 pew. Libido is coming back. <laughs> um, also, love this shirt, by the way. Yeah, oh, it is a really cool shirt. Thank you. It's very, like, there was, like, a day in August. It was called the Lionsgate Portal Day. And it's, like, a day when the energy is, like, really strong. So that's the day if you want to manifest anything, you manifest that. Is this an astrology thing? Because we both don't know yeah. what we're talking uh, We're sorry. Please, <laughs> Lionsgate, what now? Yeah, the Lionsgate portal. Portal. <laughs> yeah. Can you tell yeah. us what that means as people I don't who- think we can go through the Lionsgate portal during the SAG strike. I think Lionsgate <laughs> is- <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh, Maddie, that was we're so We're manifesting good. a new contract for the actors. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> we're manifesting healthcare and rights- <laughs> Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yes. Wait, but what um, it actually is the Lionsgate portal? I don't I don't know much about it. All I know is that I was seeing it on TikTok and people were saying there this is. is the day you want to manifest on TikTok. There it is. Yeah. A bunch of a bunch of queer people told you to to make a wish on this day and yeah. you were like that's <laughs> I'm like and, cool. Done. And yet when straight people are like Jesus, you're like whoa, 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 get out of here with that crack of shit. <laughs> Disgusting. Get the fuck out of here. Dis- I am going through the Lionsgate. Excuse yes! me. <laughs> My lion is, lion is my Jesus. Yeah, some Narnia bullshit. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, that was a sidetrack. That was- the, the lion, the witch, and the drag wardrobe is the <laughs> lion's gate. <laughs> the lion's gay. So anyway, I cut you off a million times to make a bunch of oh, jokes. Aslan making fun would of queer be a people. good like, non-binary name. What, what lion? would be? Aslan? Wasn't that the lion in Narnia? Oh, I don't actually know, Maddie. Know. Now, now you're now. See, this is what happens. You say some nerdy shit as a bit, and I'm like, well, actually, technically, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and you're like, I was fully joking. I wouldn't be caught dead. Believe me. <laughs> and I'm like, well, actually, it's my favorite thing in the world. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, I've read Narnia six times. So. <laughs> um, no, but you know what I do want to talk about? Yes. And this is the first time I'm bringing this up online because it's very vulnerable. Wow, clickbait, clickbait. Um, <laughs> okay, but what do you guys think about hemorrhoids? Have you had one? And what oh, is your Kira, experience? You are speaking to a part of me, specifically my asshole, that I I have not had the opportunity to talk about a lot on this podcast. Okay. I've never had hemorrhoids. So I'll... Uh, oh, look at Respectfully, I will not take up... Sp- Space in this space. (laughs) I will not take up space in your space. Me trying to brag that I haven't had hemorrhoids by by being like the most considerate. I actually don't want to take up space because I want to make this very clear. I cannot speak to this. I I am actually, and let me say this so clearly, not a member of this community. (laughs) No? Okay. Well, you know what? I I want to speak on behalf of the hemorrhoid. (laughs) I want to speak on behalf of the hemorrhoid community. I know how difficult it is, especially when they are outside of your asshole. And when it comes to sex, it's like that becomes a whole different thing because it's like now you have like this 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 part of you that you're like ashamed or like scared to show someone. And yeah. it's so vulnerable. Sorry, and it's it, so funny that if you just cut that, you could it sounds like you're talking about being gay. <laughs> you just like have this part of you that like you're so scared to show someone and it's really vulnerable and you're like hiding it. And you're like, I don't know if I can talk to my parents about this. Like, I don't even know what resources there are. Do you know what I mean? Like, I- you know what? I my- showed one girl in my class and that was it. <laughs> Do you know what it's like to be in the locker room and no one knows? <laughs> if they look at me, maybe they'll like be able to figure it out. <laughs> Yeah, you know what? My hemorrhoids have a lot to do with my sexuality. Um, <laughs> it does. I Sorry, I totally cut you off. That right? just made me laugh so hard. All right, let me just say this. I'm not the best pooper, okay? Okay. I'm not the best pooper. Are you I've a never... pusher? Oh, 
Oh, we're pushing, baby. Oh, no. I I have a squatty potty. Can can I just say <laughs> to the people who develop the squatty potty? I would say there's Alan Turing, okay, the inventor of the computer, and then there are the people that put out ARPANET, the predecessor to the internet. And then there's the inventor of the squatty potty up here in number one of the most influential people of the past 100 years. The inventor of the squatty potty has changed my life. Thank you so much for just hearing, <laughs> hearing my, my moans from the bathroom and <gasps> turning it into just an, ah, ah, my God, an absolute gift. I'm not, a, you, okay. I'm a, <laughs> but do you have a bidet? I actually do have a bidet that I'm giving to Maddie. <laughs> Oh, I forgot to take that the other day, but I am so excited. <laughs> it's an essential. It will change your life. Wait, so does but, that help with the hemorrhoids? Yeah, because like Why? if you have if you have hemorrhoids, like I might be that, keeping this bidet, Maddie. <laughs> honestly, well, if you have like a hemorrhoid that's like pushing, like it pushes the skin through your butthole, so it goes outside. So there's like yes. a there, there's like a like a lump, a ball outside yeah. of your anus. Okay. Yes. And Maddie, you won't know Maddie, because you, you're you not a part of the community. You're not a part of the community. Maddie, you've never had sex with a woman. Fuck off with your face looking at us like that. You have sex with men. They have ball sacks. Shut the fuck up. Get out of here. Okay. You. <laughs> These you, are like baby ball sacks on your butt. This, this is nothing compared. Men have a little seam running down their ball. That's insane. And you're getting a little upset about a hemorrhoid. Like, fuck off. No, I was just I was laughing because I was the way you were describing hemorrhoids. It just reminded me of like pro life protesters that are like they have feelings. You could just put a picture of a hemorrhoid on there, and I wouldn't know the difference. <laughs> yeah. So this is why the bidet is very good because sometimes you can get poopy. It's, it's it's easy to get really poopy really quickly and not be able to like clean yourself. <laughs> that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. Right. So bidet. Invest in it. If you have hemorrhoids, this is a PSA for everyone. Get a bidet. Wait, That's how do you get hemorrhoids? Is it from sitting on the toilet too long? Maddie, <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> fuck. Honestly, Sorry, I'm not trying to like blame. I don't know what happens. <laughs> this is just, this does sound like a metaphor for being gay. Like how do you, is it just like from being around other gay people too much? Like do you just <laughs> yeah. hang out at drag shows too long and then you're gay? Are you born with it? Like. There, aren't they a busted blood vessel in your your butthole? They're swollen blood vessels in your butthole. Yeah. Yeah. Like on so, like, if you're bottle. constipated and you're pushing, that can create a hemorrhoid. Oh. Yeah. 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 Or, like, if you sit on the toilet on your phone for too long, you can get a hemorrhoid. Um, oh, I didn't. Oh, it is from sitting on the toilet. Oh, I'm sorry I made fun of you, Maddie. It I could be. <laughs> but it could also be, like, from, like, giving birth. Like, lots of, like, women who've given birth have hemorrhoids. Oh, wow. Because it's a lot of pushing, right? It's, it's basic. Yeah. I don't know what mine are from because I don't. Push. I have good poops. Like I really take care of my. It's out. I mean, you've got the bidet and everything. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know where it came from, but it just popped up this summer, and I'm like, Fuck. no pun intended. <laughs> um. Well, okay. So now, how is this affecting your sex life, Kira? Well, I was literally just about to ask that. You You have to just like. I've had to learn to accept my body the way it is because for a while <laughs> I was just like, this is coming back to like the tummy talk. Too. I was going to say yeah. after tummy move on to hemorrhoids. Yeah. Yeah. No, seriously. <laughs> this has been my journey. And they're related. Yeah. They're related. This is my journey. Okay. Welcome back to my healing journey. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's like, obviously my partner doesn't care, but I'm still like really in my head about like, oh my God, like, do I look fucked up down there? Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Especially if you're like, obviously the different positions, you know what I mean? Yes. It depends on the position. And like what you're, you're doing. Yeah. So are you doing, are you getting pounded less from behind Kira? I don't even really know what you <laughs> and your, I don't know what you and your partner are doing. So. <laughs> well, Either way, like, it's gonna, like, somehow they're gonna see my butthole. You know, it's just... Somehow. It's no, inevitable. I disagree. I'm not sure that unless I've specifically said to Jen, hey, I need you to take a look at my butthole, and we are at that point in, in our relationship where I've done that. Mm -hmm. 
Obviously, oh, yeah. there have been moments in my life where I've wanted someone to take a peek. That's actually, why have we not talked about this on the podcast ever? The moment where you reach a point in your relationship where you're like, hey, everything okay down there? Because yeah. I... That's so cute. That's when I you felt, know it's love. Yeah, yeah. I felt something weird and I don't know what's going on. You know, yeah. and then it ends up being a piece of toilet paper. But like, you know, like that <laughs> moment is a very vulnerable moment when you you lay down in bed and you show someone your asshole. Like yes. when, when you got your first hemorrhoid, I'm sure that's what happened. I was, I, when I got my first hemorrhoid, I was in high school, which was like oh. really young, by the way, to get a hemorrhoid. So I was even more embarrassed and I was with a dude. So I wasn't going to show him my hemorrhoid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but now like, I don't know. Yeah. My partner, I've definitely been like, all right, like how do, how does my butthole look? And I just like bend over and spread the cheeks <laughs> with my partner now. And like, it's a great, it's a great dynamic. <laughs> yeah. I, I, that, that is love. That's love. Mm -hmm. When you're like, mm -hmm. my butthole is the worst it's ever been. Yes, exactly. And I exactly. know you're going to love me exactly the way that yeah. I am. Yeah. People are like, oh, it's so intense to like look into someone's eyes. And it's like, look into someone's asshole. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look into my butthole. Eyes are the windows to the soul, but the asshole is, it's the back entrance. <laughs> it's the director, it's the trap door. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There's a speakeasy in there. <laughs> you got to know the serving. password and it's, I love you. Um, <laughs> yeah. The password to my asshole is I love you. It's the Aww. funniest thing I've ever heard. That's the password to my or password passhole. Gross. Um, I I hooked up with a girl once who had a hemorrhoid, and she was like, "I was like, please let me put my finger in your butt." And I had a big thing about putting fingers in butts at that time. And she was like, "I want you to, but I have a hemorrhoid, so you like can't look when you do it." Oh. And I was like, okay. I want to know if like butt stuff is even available for people with hemorrhoids because I haven't tried it. <laughs> like, I feel like it would hurt. Like that's why I'm surprised that she was like, oh, don't look. I'm I like, think it, I think it, it was like kind of on the outside and it was small, I think. So it didn't really um, matter. Okay. But, um, and you know, lube and all that. Yeah. But, uh, Kira, why don't you just, you know, give it a very slow push. <laughs> Honestly, Kira, don't do anything I'm saying. Consult, <laughs> consult with a medical professional. I cannot. No, what believe. if it gets rid of them? Because if there's like a suction and the pressure is kind of moving in now. I thought about that. It's like how when someone dents a car, you can like heat it up and put a plunger on it and pull it out and listener, it'll like undo the dent. Listener, do you know what I'm talking about? Listener, do not do this. <laughs> yeah, no, oh yeah, talk, don't do it. Talk to your doctor. Yes. We're going to talk amongst ourselves. Don't do yeah. any of this. Don't. But Kira, try it. Okay. Well, like, <laughs> I might. Because I think it's also, another thing is, like, I need to show my butthole some love. So, like, maybe you do. this is a way to get rid of the hemorrhoids. You're saying that having someone finger your butthole is like singing to your plants? I literally yes. was about to say, like, singing to like, with <laughs> your plants. Yes. God. Even across the country, we're we all we're in sync, Maddie. Ever since we it's did the disgusting. booby grab, we're on another level. <laughs> that was like pairing our Bluetooth. <laughs> that was like the Avatar hair. <laughs> we should do a photo shoot together where we grab each other's tits for the. Nothing for the, would be funnier. The literal. We should do a naked photo shoot together. Ashley, that'd be the funniest thing that's ever happened. We okay, have to do that. We're doing it. We have to do that. I can picture it. I can picture it. Thank you, Kira. Yeah. Just my ass is so small, but you can see one tiny hemorrhoid hanging out of it. That's how small. <laughs> You're like, what is that? A balloon? Balloon animal? Oh, no. That's just Ashley's hemorrhoid. Is, the, is that the... Is that a grape? That, yeah. No, is that the third uh, ass cheek? <laughs> We're going to look like Carl and Jimmy Neutron. Like, just... <laughs> oh, no. I have to Google it. No way. Wait, Kira, do you know what I'm talking about? No. Oh, my God. We are going to look like Carl and J Jimmy Neutron. You don't know Carl and Jimmy Neutron? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm just joking that that's our body types. I resonate deeply with Carl in general. Croissant. But, you know, we can get that at a later date. I'm too old. Ugh. Our age difference isn't serving us I bet there's a lot right of people now. listening who know exactly what I'm talking about. And thank Carl you, listener, for being here. Weird kid who goes like, can I have a croissant? 
See, this is bombing right now on the podcast, but I'm playing to the back of the room. Yeah, I know no, someone out there is getting someone this. Someone out there is loving it. I just, <laughs> Carl just speaks to me on a deep, deep level. Gender wise, Carl from Jimmy Neutron is a uh, Well, piece of my that soul. was wonderful, Kira. Do you mind if we go to, <laughs> thank you for sharing. You were so vulnerable. It was powerful. <laughs> Do you mind if we go to Maddie? Go ahead. Go ahead. Listener, one of the best ways to support this podcast is to come see me live, okay? It, it's a really great way to just support the whole team and everything that we do here. So get on my text list or my email list. It's international, both of them. AshleyGavin.com. Go sign up, and I'll literally text you when I'm in your area. So you don't have to hear all these plugs. You can skip right by them. Don't even worry about your city. Just get on one of those two things and I will let you know, okay? Because there's a lot of cities coming and I just remaking this announcement over and over again. We all think it's annoying. You do, I do. Get on the text list, you piece of shit. <laughs> Maddie, did you have gay sex this week? No. <laughs> <laughs> I did not have gay sex this week. But I'm home in North Carolina, and every time I hear, I realize, like, I came in to my dad's house, and I was like, I'm wearing almost all of his clothes that I brought from New York. <laughs> and I think that's, like, a gender thing, is, like, since I was a kid, I've always loved, like, wearing my dad's, like, socks and shirts and flannels. And then when I come back, I'm like, oh, my God, my wardrobe is almost exclusively my father's clothes. This is his Lululemon tank top. But, Wait, uh, what? <laughs> no, 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 oh, I'm joking. Dad, oh, oh. <laughs> I was like, your dad is genderqueer. Yeah, if my dad was, that would be so funny. <laughs> That'd but be really was, funny that you became more feminine by wearing your father's clothing. <laughs> you just loop back the other way because your dad is genderqueer. <laughs> That's going to start happening. That's so funny. P genderqueer people with kids, their kids are going to start experimenting with their gender by wearing their parents' clothes. But it's they're, their own gender. But it's their it's own like gender. It's like their sis. That's so yeah. funny. <laughs> <laughs> But um, it reminded me of this time that I, so it's always been a thing. I've like loved wearing like really, really big t-shirts because they kind of have this like mask fit and they feel just kind of like, I, I just like how they fit. And now- I wouldn't know anything about that. <laughs> Not at all. But it reminded me, but sometimes if you don't do it right, it can look a little like schlubby maybe. Yeah. And I'm not saying that with judgment for anyone else, but I definitely know there's been some times where I have not executed it the way you I intended. You want it to fit, like, it's not that it needs, it's baggy, but there's a certain cut and proportion that you want for it for your body type or whatever. Yeah. But it reminded me of this time in Chicago. I was, like, going up at a show, and I was, like, in my head, I was, like, I look like Billie Eilish right now. Like, I was, like, this is so cool. Looking back, I had, like, a beanie. Uh, these like black jeans, Doc Martens, and this giant wrinkly neon green shirt, like so wrinkled and so bright, like construction worker, don't hit me with your car, neon green. But I was like, this is so queer of me. And I remember my friend, my friend, who's a great comic, Tim Smith. He's so funny. Do you know Tim? I do like the idea of being, looking so horrible that you're like, I'm so queer. Like, just the act of looking mm. horrendous. No, literally, uh, I used to have a bit about that where I'm like, it's hard to tell the difference between appearing, like, masculine or, like, a like just, like, a piece of shit woman. Yes, like I, 100%. Like, I would be like, I don't shave my legs, and I start fights on the bus, and people are like, you're in a crisis. This isn't brave. The mayor is intervening. <laughs> but well, this is definitely one of those instances. Oh, sorry, what were you going to say? No, 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 no. I just, a bit about being being so queer the mayor intervenes. Ma'am, <laughs> ma'am. <laughs> Look, we get it. We celebrate you, but you have got to stop yelling at people on the train. <laughs> in New Gone York City, far. in New York City to be that queer, that is really special. To be like, I'm taking up space. And you're like, it's a bike lane. <laughs> <laughs> you're in the middle of the road. <laughs> I'm queer and I'm taking up space. This is abundance. Yeah, it's abundance. We, <laughs> we, you've, 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 uh, Block three lanes. <laughs> I'm queer and I'm taking up space. You're sucking dick in a handicap spot. What are we talking about? <laughs> Thank you, Maddie, for coming in with the specifics. Oh, when I have not had them. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's so funny. Put
pushing a pregnant woman to the ground. I deserve to be here <laughs> in my big shirt. This is a straight baby, and I am <laughs> queer and getting my eggs frozen. Get out of my fucking seat. <laughs> But the thing with this giant green shirt that this, this story with my dad's stuff all reminded me of was that I we were at a show and my friend Tim, who's a cis straight guy, one of my best friends, I love him, and he was like, "Oh my god, I love this!" And I was like, "A man rec- recognizing my masculinity, this is awesome." And he goes, "No, no, no, I thought I looked like shit." <laughs> <laughs> And then you, I was like worried I didn't dress up enough for this gig. But then you come in here looking and he's like, I love you. You just look awful. And it made me laugh so hard. It was so, so funny. He was like, oh, I love this. You, you, you look unbelievable. It's it's really funny how in a way a male friendship can do that for you as a, as a woman. And I'm speaking generally again faster than like a female no like femme friend is going to be like oh you look really bad (laughs) they they will never (laughs) ever do that but a guy will say to you are you tired have you slept in like days and you'll be like oh my god i'm not doing well i'm not (laughs) doing well at all like things are very very bad but uh, and in a way there's like a realness to that because you know they're being stupid well, and he knew it was funny. He was being like, I'm shitting on you because that's the nature of our relationship. It's like very roasty. And he'll bring it up now years later. He'll be like, God, that green shirt was crazy. <laughs> also, like, is it a queer thing to like not have an iron? Because like, I don't, I don't own an iron. <laughs> I am such a wrinkly fuck. My yeah. outfits would look, sometimes I look at myself in the mirror and I am like, you, these are nice clothes. Like you look, yeah. this would be nice. If these were not wrinkly, you would exactly. be, you would look good right now, but you don't look good. You look like a schlub. Like you might as well not have bought these. Why yeah. are you doing this? It's just like ironing is like way too difficult. My hat was wrinkly the other day. <laughs> That's the funniest thing I ever heard. <laughs> Me too. I had a bucket hat. I had to steam my hat. Not even a bucket hat, dude. Like my, I had wrinkles on this hat. <laughs> How do you get that? Like- I don't even know. I have no idea. That's so funny. Just eating too much pussy. Yeah, man. (laughs) (laughs) So stupid. Um, Even your hat's getting in there. Your hat's getting some action. Well, that's where I wear it backwards. You got to get in there real quick. (laughs) Right. (laughs) You have the time. Yeah, Ashley wears a hat backwards for the same reason you, like, can't store stuff on your fire escape. You're like... (laughs) (laughs) I had that as a joke. I I, I used to say I wear my hat backwards for a reason. I'm going to add that if that's okay, Maddie. That was really funny. Because you got to be ready at a second's notice. You don't know how quick you got to get in and out, you know? No. Well, Maddie, you've been wearing the tank top a lot. You've been doing more of a femme look. Is it just the season? I was going to say, it is... I've enjoyed being femme recently. I've been having a little femme moment, but also it's just so fucking hot outside that like in fall, I'll be interested to see what the move is because I am, okay, I am kind of gunning for like a, like a, like a jean short thigh high socks thing. I'm kind of thinking about maybe doing that in the fall, but also fall is my big, like huge Carhartt jacket. I love fall flannels like it's a really gender wise i feel like you have the most uh space to fuck around gender wise the fall is for queers yeah mm. and the summer the gender is, fluids is for women like my girlfriend my yeah. <laughs> crop top city i can a, why does my girlfriend have five crop tops she has five crop tops why doesn't she have more i i mean she might have more i don't even know she, it, it is her it is like her zone, the crop top. Yeah, I love crop tops. Oh, Even you like my mask wife, mask, loves crop tops. But that's really? why they're called a girly pop mask. It's different. It's a different category of a mask. It's a girly, girly pop. pop mask? Yeah. I've not heard that. Yeah, it's a new I thing. I don't scroll on TikTok anymore. I'm I'm not, I'm upset. I've been hurt. Get with it, Ashley. You're getting old. <laughs> I really am, though. I am getting old, and I think it's working for me. <laughs> I think, yeah. You're slaying. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. Wait, what was I going to say? Kira, you are genderqueer. Yeah. Would you describe yourself that way? 
Yeah. I would also say that like, I, I align with like being female too. It's, it's just like, I, I identify with like the female experience, right? but I don't give a fuck about like gender anymore. I'm just like, whatever you see me as cool. Like I was bringing this up for a reason. I'm realizing is most of our non-binary gender fluid guests are from the internet and not from the comedy community. So they're more often on episodes with Brie. Maddie, oh. you don't get a lot of episodes with people like Kira. And I wanted to say, Kira's been doing this longer than you have, being gender fluid. So I, I think you should ask Kira some pro tips because you guys align in a lot of ways. <laughs> wait, this kind of rocks. Okay, because the thing I this was just- Wait, I'm like literally your dad and I'm like, um, <laughs> yeah. I look, I can't provide for you what you need, but I found this bitch. So, um, you're coming home from work. Like Steve's daughter is also not a girl. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh my God. That's actually, that's actually my dad's name. So hilarious. No way. Really? <laughs> yeah. That's so funny. That's what I named my stomach when I was, when I was a kid, I called, called it Steve. We, actually, we're going to have a whole gender. We need a whole separate gender episode, but I feel so similarly. We're like, I do feel like I talked about this a little more where I, on the podcast and some other episodes that like, I do feel an attachment to being like a woman and like female experience, but I would almost describe it as like, I'm fine with my sex being female, but my gender is like totally doing whatever. And yes. like, I think that's so cool. And I kind of didn't really know you could do that. And then it's like, Oh, you can actually do whatever the fuck you want. Yeah. So like, that rocks. There's no rules. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. You can do whatever the fuck you want. Gender is a social construct. Who fucking cares? Like, I feel you, like in another life, everybody I lived, gets hemorrhoids. I, <laughs> exactly. Well, apparently not Maddie, but, um, <laughs> but yeah, I feel like in another life I was like a genderless goblin living in a cave. And I really, I really resonate with that. Like a wrinkly little old man with no gender. Well, I guess I just said man, but like little old creature. But <laughs> men I don't have gender. I can write a thesis about that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like Danny DeVito is a gender neutral icon. Yeah. yeah. Also something yeah. about the wrinkly old man body. This is one of my like, oh my God, I tried to do a joke about this and it never, it was, but like, I, I like a bit about it, like in stand up, but that was like, uh, like, like I want it just being an orb to be not only gender neutral, but like just completely neutral in the eyes of the universe. Yeah. Maddie, what? Yeah. See, about, this is why it never worked. I did this at North Carolina comedy open mics. I, okay, Kira, to just describe, I just want you to imagine the broiest guy, the male version of me wearing exactly what I'm wearing, going up on stage and being like, oh, you two dating, you look like you suck his dick. And then Maddie getting up there and being like, I am a genderless orb. Like that. <laughs> I would laugh I will, because I feel like a genderless orb as well. Okay. Like I will validate you on that. Like that is, that is my life. So do you feel like though, when you I'm a genderless orb <laughs> at the North Carolina open mic, <laughs> <laughs> there are men up there. There are men up there just barely clean. This is their one time away from their wife. This is what they do every week. They just want to be there with their guy friends talking about uh, how they don't get their dick sucked. And Maddie gets up there and is like, have you ever just felt like a genderless orb floating through space? What is even matter made of? We're all made of the same stuff. Why does some of it have gender and others is neutral? Do you get it? Hey, what's the deal with gender? Like, I'm just a body of molecules floating through space. I'm sure there was one person in the back corner that was like, yeah, me too. <laughs> I'm That's sorry, so I did you so hard about the genderless orb joke. Though. No, it's hilarious. There's a reason it never worked. Also, I'm not being like, here's this bit I have. I'm like, isn't this funny that at 17 I thought this was. But the old man body, like, like, oh, that's what I was going to ask. No, no, no. Was do you feel like since whatever gender queerness is, but like, like in a weird way, I feel like I've almost become more in touch with my masculinity, but also more in <laughs> touch with my femininity more so than I would have without gender queerness. Like, do you feel like that at all? Yeah. I feel like I'm more comfortable expressing my femininity as, as I've realized that I am gender fluid mm. because it's just like more, I don't know. Like I can, I'm just more authentic now so I can just do whatever the fuck I want and I, I don't feel like I'm still in this box of like, you have to be a woman and you have to look like this and you have to 
You know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm like very like my gender expression changes like very a lot from day to day. Um, but I do lean into my femme side probably more. And like, that's cool. Yeah, I think you hear that a lot from trans folks that the comfort level to just live freely comes with the security of, you know, n- knowing who you are. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Yeah. Um, well, this was beautiful. This was a, a beautiful genderless orb of an episode. Thank you for <laughs> being here, Kira. Do you have anything that you want to plug? Maybe the show, maybe not. I do have a podcast. It's called Safe Space with Kira Graves. And it's all about like my healing journey, healing my mental health and my spiritual awakening. And I have people on to talk about like their healing journey. So it's very like mental health based, um, spirituality based. So if you really like that, check it out. Um, and then you can follow me on TikTok, Kira.Graves, Instagram, Kira Graves. And then I will be in a series coming up. Awesome. And then Maddie, do you have anything you want to plug? Um, I have another podcast as well called Phone is in the Bag. It's a comedy podcast, my best bud, Kenyon. Um, and I'm going to be on the road a little bit. So there's a mailing list in the link in my bio on Instagram at Maddie T. Wiener, uh, where you can put in your phone number and email and I'll text you when I am coming to your city because mom taught me well. I did teach <laughs> you well. And damn it, if you don't go listen to Safe Space with Kira or Phones in the Bag with Maddie and Kenyon, you're a piece of shit. You're not supporting <laughs> genderqueer art. You're a bad person. You are not a genderless orb. You are a cis straight man. I said yeah. it here today. That's what you are, and I mean that. And if you don't come see me on tour, then you're not support- supporting gay art, and you're still what I said. Patreon.com slash WHGS. Support this podcast. We cannot do it without you. I know, I know you hear the ads and stuff, but we're not one of those mega pods you know i know you think i'm the only gay person doing this i'm not please give me your money patreon.com slash whgs it pays maddie okay come on okay gay thought i do these every now and then a gratitude gay thought um this has been a weird time for me and i'm sure you've seen or heard about it in some way and i have not really told the the full story um and i'll tell you why I haven't done that um, as well at some point, but a lot of you have been really supportive regardless. Um, (laughs) And what I've noticed from this is I've noticed a lot of things, but the number one thing that I've noticed is weirdly I'm starting to feel safer as a comedian because I know the people here get it. And I think that's all I can really say right now before I like kind of collect myself. But moving from being a comedian in clubs and cruises to being a comedian for like an all queer environment was a really difficult transition for me. And I'm sure you guys know that because I talk about it a lot. So the fact that this sort of happened, I think was inevitable in a weird way. And so now that I have taken a step back and watch what happened, kind of watch what happened in the fod and everything. And, and the people that are still here, you guys, I'm really grateful for you guys. And I'm grateful that you exist. <laughs> um, and for your support. Yeah. Just thank you. I, I didn't prepare this, so I don't know if it came off the way that I want it to, but, um, I feel really understood by you guys. A lot of you uh, don't feel queer enough or, you know, maybe you're bisexual and you're in a relationship with a man or you're a bisexual man with a relationship with a cis woman, whatever it might be that makes you feel isolated from the queer community. I know, and I've never talked about this, but I felt isolated from the queer community and I have the past few months. And I think... One of the reasons I've been so quiet is I, I really, as is, is strange as it's going to sound, I really value kindness, <laughs> despite my stage persona and all that. And so those of you who've been kind, thank you. All right. Give me a dollar, bitch. <laughs> 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 <laughs>